What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Uh, today, we're going to be going through Exodus 18. The last couple of weeks, we've been doing Exodus Bible studies on the Sabbath days. But God led me to go ahead and do 18 tonight. So, uh, here in chapter 18, we're going to see about uh, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul. This first death is just a body. Second death is, bo is body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus, Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross, so that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life through him. Our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection, his righteousness that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. To turn from your sins. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Because we have to, we have to be willing to forsake our sins if we're turning to him for the forgiveness of, of our sins. We have to be willing to turn away from our sins. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you, and you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and discernment. The Holy Spirit gives you power. If you believe and you ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. And you got to mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Can't even imagine it. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your love to Jesus today. Now let's uh, get into Exodus 18. Shouldn't be too long a chapter. We'll see. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law. And so before we even uh, really get started with the chapter... If we go back to chapter 2 of Exodus, this is the first time we see about Jethro. It's when um, Moses killed the Egyptian, then uh, he fled. Pharaoh heard of it, and then he fled. It says, when, when Pharaoh heard this matter, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the presence of Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. And, you know, there's so, just so many types, types and shadows in here. Because Moses is a type of sh type and shadow of Jesus, we have the well, which represents, you know, the the living water, the Holy Spirit, and the seven daughters representing the seven churches. But uh, wow. <laughs> now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and filled the troughs, filled the troughs to water their father's flock. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, that would represent the, the people of God. Um, then the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered the flock. <laughs> Hallelujah. When they came to Reuel, Reuel, their father, this is also Jethro. Um, I'm not going to get into or really look into why... He's mentioned as Raul and also Jethro, but it's the same person. When they came to Raul, their father, he said, Why have you come back so soon? 
So they said, An Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds. And what is more, he even drew the water for us and watered the flock. Again, Moses is a type and shadow of Jesus, a foreshadowing of Jesus. And this is what's so amazing about the Bible. Not only is it a history book uh, telling the story of mankind, it gives the redemption of mankind and foretells the future but beyond that if if you want to get deeper into the word you start to understand that uh, through the lives of these people in the Bible God was foretelling and prophesying things to come prophesying things about Jesus and about his people through the lives of the people in the Bible through these Bible stories like it's supernatural. It's the living word. Hallelujah. So they said, An Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds. And what is more, he even drew the water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he then? Why is it that you have left the man behind? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses was willing to dwell with the man, and he gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses. Then she gave birth to a son, and he named him Gershom. For he said, I have become a sojourner in a foreign land. And we're going to... Let's just go back to Exodus 18. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, or Raoul, Moses' father-in-law, heard that all that God, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people. How Yahuwah had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Moses' wife, Zipporah, after he had sent her away. Um, I guess when he was in, e in Egypt. And when. I, I, I don't know exactly what. Uh, maybe maybe it's in the scripture. I just don't remember. Uh, exactly where. At what, what point he sent him. He sent her back to uh, her father. Jethro Moses' father-in-law. Took Moses' wife Zipporah. After he had sent her away. And her two sons, uh, and this is Moses' two sons, one who was named Gershom, for Moses had said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And so Gershom means, the name meaning is uh, a sojourner there. The other was named Eliezer, for he said, the God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Eliezer means help of my God. Hallelujah. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with, the sons, with, with his sons and with his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was camped at the Mount of God which would be Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. It's also known as Mount Horeb. And we saw in the last chapter that they were... Actually, don't have the map pulled up. But we saw that in the last chapter they had gotten right down uh, next to Mount Sinai, pretty much, in the wilderness of Sinai. <clears throat> Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was camped at the Mount of God, or Mountain of God. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Then Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and he bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that Yahuwah had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake. All the hardship that had befallen them on the journey and how Yahuwah had delivered them. Jethro rejoiced over all the goodness which Yahuwah had done to Israel in delivering them from the hand of the Egyptians. So Jethro said, Blessed be Yahuwah who delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of Pharaoh and who delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yahuwah is greater than all the gods. Indeed, 
it was proven when they dealt proudly against the people. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came with all, and if you remember, Moses had just built. And when I was looking into it, well, I'll just continue. Moses had just, just built that altar there. And we went through that in that last chapter. Then Jethro, Moses' Moses's father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law before God. It came about the next day that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood about Moses from the morning, about or around Moses from the morning until the evening. Now, when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What is this thing that you were doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge, and all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, it comes to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, and make known the statutes of God and his laws. And so when I was looking up about Jethro, um, some people, some were saying that this this actually happened uh, later on um, in the second year of Israel being there, and this is why he uh, mentioned the laws and the commandments of God. But I'm not sure. I'm not going to get more into that right now. Moses, Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you were doing is not good. You will surely wear out, both yourselves, or both yourself and these people who are with you. For the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel. And God be with you. You be the people's representative before God. And you bring the disputes to God. Then teach, then teach them the statutes and laws. And make known to them the way in which they are to walk, and the work they are to do. Furthermore, you shall select out of all the people, able men who fear God, men of truth, those who hate dishonest gain. And you shall place these over them as leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Let them judge the people at all times, and let it be that every major dispute they will bring to you but every minor dispute they themselves will judge so it will be easier for you and they will bear the burden with you if you do this thing and God so commands you then you will be able to <clears throat> be able to endure and all these people also will go to their place in peace so Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. They judged the people at all times, the difficult dispute they would bring to Moses, but every minor dispute they themselves would judge. Then Moses bade his father-in-law farewell, and he went his way into his own land. Into back to Midian. He was a priest of Midian. And so, you know, in the same way us, we can't can't do everything by ourselves. We need support. We need brothers, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Unfortunately, um, these days, and, I, you know, I guess always, uh, since back then as well, but especially here in these last days, it's it's hard to trust people. I just, you know, I, I myself, I've had, t I mean, almost, almost every person that seems to be a person of God that is, uh, that tries to get close with me. 
has been an enemy, has been a worker of the enemy, a worker of Satan, literally. This is the wheat and the tares that Jesus spoke about. And y'all wouldn't believe how many, how many, how many there are out there and how many they send to people. I just know, like I said, most of the people I've come across in my walk the last couple of years that attempted to get close with me, to get cool with me, to to be friends with me, to be brothers and sisters with me, ended up being tears, ended up being fake. And a lot of these tears are um, demons in the flesh, demonic beings, uh, hybrid beings, reptilian beings, and I believe some even probably fallen angels as well. I'm not, you know, I just leave it at that. I believe there's uh, among the terrors. I believe there's fallen angels. I believe there's hi- hybrid demonic beings, um, and may- maybe humans as well. But I believe a lot of these are are not not human or not fully human. They're uh, advanced beings that, you know, the Bible says our our battle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of darkness. And, um... So it's hard to have, you know, it's hard here in these last days to have, uh... At least in my case, has been to have true support or a true, uh... True... Brothers and sisters. True fellowship. Because... You know, I used to be in fellowship with a lot of people, but a lot of people ended up being tears. God opened my eyes. God revealed that Matthew 13 says uh, the tears became, and mentioned at a certain time when the tears became evident. And that happened last year. But I'm still, uh, you know, there's still many around me. There's still many... Uh, Many online, many in person, you know, it's it's crazy. And it's always the people that seem to be the most, uh, the the real people of God. True people, people that seem to be true people of God. But it is what it is. That's why Jesus said, uh, the Bible says, uh, that we can't trust man. Our our trust is to be in God. Not any not trusting in any people. But uh that's the end of Exodus eighteen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith, let's endure to the end, no matter what we have to go through here in these last days. Let's uh shine his light in everything we do, let's show his love in everything we do. Love is the most important thing. The whole law is based on love. It's based on loving God and loving our neighbor. It's basically, if you, basically a chart. Love at the top, then loving God, loving our neighbor, then the Ten Commandments, then the rest of the commandments after that. But uh, let's preach the gospel. Let's stay in the Word. Let's stay focused on God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. God wants to save you. God loves you. Jesus sacrificed himself for us in order to give us eternal life. And if we believe that, if we believe that in our heart and we truly just turn to him, turn to him for forgiveness, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of Exodus 18. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom.